video is sponsored by Wren, an incredible website that makes it easy to calculate and offset your carbon footprint. I don't know how long I've waited for you. What makes a girl special? Is it just being loved by a special guy? Our story's most iconic special girls, like Twilight's Bella or Fifty Shades of Grey's Anastasia, are singled out as different from everyone else. But why? If we look at the special girl on screen, we can see some common patterns. The special girl is a chosen one, but in this case, that means she's chosen by the boy everyone else wants. You're everything that I want. It's his adoration which on some level confirms or even creates her specialness. The special girl is magnetically, instantly irresistible to the guy everyone around her can't have. Why did you hate me so much when we met? Only for making me want you so badly. And others are jealous, if not totally baffled. People aside from the special guy typically fail to appreciate her appeal because, for the most part, she seems normal. She's pretty, but in a girl-next-door-every-woman way. She's not an obvious bombshell. She's quiet yet deep, with an air of mystery. She's often a virgin. Craziest place you've had sex. Pass. Are you a virgin? She may appear unassuming, but she's able to unlock something hidden in her very special boyfriend. So I'm gonna do my kind of dancing with a great partner. Somebody who's taught me about the kind of person I want to be. This is often because she has a different way of looking at things. She makes the special guy feel even more special and helps bring out the normal or good side within him. You're what makes me real. If the special girl is given her special status by a guy, that means that her identity is a pretty fragile construct, and her specialness can be taken away as quickly as it's bestowed. But is there anything more deeply special about her beyond that? Here's our take on the special girl, what really makes her unique, and how true love makes us all special. Sometimes I can't believe how lucky I am that you chose me. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. Here at The Take, what's special to us is taking action to protect our world. This video's sponsor, Ren, believes everyone can make a meaningful difference in the climate crisis. Ren asks you a few simple questions about your lifestyle, then tells you your carbon footprint and how to reduce it. Then Ren lets you offset your remaining carbon footprint by making a monthly contribution to fund projects that plant trees, protect rainforests, and so much more. One project Ren is supporting that's close to my heart is biochar in California. It helps prevent wildfires in California's old-growth forests by removing dead and flammable trees. They then turn the tree biomass into biochar, keeping carbon out of the air for thousands of years. Coverage of the California wildfires always makes me feel anxious and helpless, so I was thrilled to contribute. Plus, Ren sends me monthly updates on projects I support, so I can see what my money is spent on with plenty of photos and details. In the past few years, I've made small changes to live more sustainably, like eating less meat and dairy. And now, through Ren, I've become so so much more aware of my carbon footprint and how I can help. Offset your carbon footprint through Ren by clicking the link in our description below, ren.co slash start slash the take. The first 100 people who sign up will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Perhaps the first special girl we encounter is the Bible's Virgin Mary. People often mistakenly think the Immaculate Conception refers to Jesus' conception, but it's actually the Catholic doctrine that Mary herself was conceived free of original sin. In the book Alone of All Her Sex, The Myth and the Cult of the Virgin Mary, historian Marina Warner writes that, by her exceptional freedom from original sin, Mary is set apart from the human race in a special and separate category. And on the surface, Mary was just a regular girl who was selected by God above all others. Others. So perhaps her special status is the reason why many subsequent special girls are virgins. I'm a virgin. Cinderella's glass slippers are actually theorized to represent her virginity. And all sorts of other special girls, from Bella Swan to Anastasia Steele, Tessa from After, and Baby from Dirty Dancing, lose their virginities to the special guy. Last night was the best night of my existence. It was the best. Special girls are also historically found in fairy tales. Both Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast's Belle are good examples of the special girl. Although unarguably beautiful, both of them are poor, and most others around them don't see much to appreciate about their personalities. How can anyone love a pebble in their shoe? But the rich, powerful princes see and fall for Cinderella's and Belle's inherent special attributes and superior characters. 
These stories tap into a natural desire we all share for people to see us as special for who we are. They also nurture an idea of predestined love, as a faded connection can make even the most normal girl seem special too. When his heart tells him that here, here is the maid predestined to be his bride. And in an article called Someday My Prince Will Come, Female Acculturation Through the Fairy Tale, Marsha Lieberman says that the underlying associational pattern of these stories links the figures of the victimized girl and the interesting girl. It is always the interesting girl, the special girl, who is in trouble. In other words, in these fantasy worlds, the special girl is often the one who needs to be saved. A fact that encourages young girls to internalize that vulnerability is linked to specialness. I feel very protective of you. So you followed me. I heard what those lowlifes were thinking. There's often no discernible reason why a special girl becomes a special girl. A special guy's attention on her illuminates that she always was. But in a way, it's almost like that attention makes her special. In Twilight, Bella is normal from the outside. But to Edward, she's the only person whose thoughts he can't read. I can read every mind in this room, apart from yours and her blood has some scent he can't get enough of. Your scent is like a drug to me. This invisible element of mystery that any every woman reading or watching can easily imagine she might have too makes her almost supernaturally irresistible to Edward. I don't have the strength to stay away from you anymore. And there are definite references back to biblical stories, especially when this chosen girl gives birth to a genetically unique daughter who is part magic, part human. Born from Twilight fan fiction, Fifty Shades of Grey is another example of a normal-seeming girl, 21-year-old college student and virgin Anastasia, who has an immediate powerful hold over billionaire sadist Christian Grey. This story adopts a modern-day fairy tale setup, right down to the casting of then-unknown Dakota Johnson as Anastasia. As Stephen Roderick wrote in an Elle magazine interview with Johnson, she was going to be the one who'd play proxy for those millions of breathless fans who fantasize about being taken by Christian Grey. What would I get out of this? Me. So it makes sense that Anna initially appears average and acts in an underwhelming, almost embarrassing way in her first interview with Christian. I'm giving the commencement address at this year's ceremony. You are? I mean, um, I know. It's so we almost believe that this lucky girl could be us. In the very first moments we meet Anna, she's contrasted against the beautiful icy blondes who work in Christian's office. Sleek, chic women with model bodies and faces, all wearing silvery gray clothes. The effect is that these women are almost robotic, part of the great billion dollar gray machine, and Anna is different. Compared to these women, Anna feels inferior. She has low self-esteem and feels exposed by Christian's attention. So when he insinuates she should apply for an internship with him, she says, I don't think I'd fit in here. Look at me. I am. It's implied that the special guy can see something in the special girl that we, maybe even she, can't see. And that gives us the feeling that any girl could be the special girl, if someone just looks at her right. Moreover, part of what's special about Anna is that, because she's not like those perfect icy women, she sees something in Christian right away that others don't. Perhaps your heart might be a bit bigger than you want to let on. There's some people who say that I don't have a heart at all. Which in turn makes him more curious about her. I would like to know more about you. And throughout the story, she doesn't simply defer to his looks and power, but challenges him to be the best person he can be. In recent years, more voices have found a lot that's toxic in Christian Grey or some of these other special guys' romantic behavior. It's Christian. He's here. Um, in Georgia. Oh, uh, here, here. What are you doing here, Christian? I came to see you. But in reality, many guys who make a big performance over the special girl aren't head over heels Edwards or Christians, and actually have more sinister intentions. You are special. You're talented. You're passionate. You're smart. Creating a special girl is actually part of a player's playbook, a way to set the woman he's with apart from all the others, and create an illusion of the relationship's superiority from the outside. A player might consciously make a girl feel special through three central techniques. The first is love bombing. 
This is when someone goes out of their way to make a new partner feel ridiculously special, showering her with gifts and compliments, asking her to move faster than she's comfortable with. It's us together forever, and that's that's what I want. We've only known each other for six yeah, weeks. I know. And then, after getting the other person hooked, suddenly withdrawing that interest. Hi, Ross. Take the Emily. Take the Rachel. In a viral true story published January 2022 entitled The Movie Star and Me, Dominica Farad describes her experience with a very famous man who showered her with affection, asking her to marry him on the third day of knowing her, and then cut off all contact when she began to reciprocate. Another special girl player's tactic is telling her she's not like all the other girls. I knew y'all special from the moment I saw you. It's written on your faces. While this can seem super romantic, the truth is a guy who puts other women down and pits his date against other women, even if he's saying she's superior, is flying a red flag. And the third toxic special girl tactic is isolating her, perhaps making her feel it's them two against the world, and attempting to sever her connections with friends and family so she has no support if his behavior starts to become more alarming or threatening. This is what he does. He tries to isolate me and he tries to get me alone. The three tenets of toxic special girl creation are ordinarily performed by narcissists, the kind of men who want to be with the most special girl. And in some of the stories we see on screen, the men that create special girls are predatory. Think Monroe in Diary of a Teenage Girl, Connor in Fish Tank, or David in An Education. It's a special day. She's a special girl. I know it. <laughs> with these often married men, it's a repeated pattern where they shower young girls with attention, making them feel like they're experiencing a special, life-changing attraction, when the reality is there's no future there, and these girls are just vulnerable children. Good God. You're a child. You didn't know about any of this, presumably. No, they never do. Because of the toxic reasons a man might try to create a special girl, sometimes her story is a sad one. In Big Little Lies, Celeste's husband Perry swings dramatically between treating her like the most amazing woman on earth and then abusing her. He treats me like a goddess. When he's not hurting you. And for a long time, she clings to the idea that he's planted in her, that she's special and she can fix him. I kept saying, come on, Celeste, you can do it. He's gonna change. Taylor Swift's All Too Well 10-minute version describes her relationship a little like this. The narrator was the special girl, whose specialness shone on her boyfriend, but the pressure of that was huge for her, and ultimately, he lost interest when she began to reveal the real her. In Blue Valentine, Dean gets a special feeling about Cindy. Yeah. She just seems different, you know, I don't know. Like, how different? I don't know, I just got a feeling about her. But in the end, being the special girl in a difficult relationship isn't enough for Cindy. She has to compromise everything she ever wanted, including the medical career she dreamed of, for a love story that doesn't really fulfill her. Turns out, being someone's special girl is a lot of pressure. It's a great look. But you're looking at the wrong girl. This is evident in Jules and Rue's relationship in Euphoria. No girl had ever looked at me the way Rue did. Although Rue loves Jules and puts her above everyone else, Jules sometimes feels suffocated by the pressure of being her special girl, because it comes with a catch. Jules is apparently the one person Rue can stay sober for. Her sobriety is like, completely dependent on how available I am to her. Meanwhile, other stories about love overcoming adversity are the tale of the special guy finally realizing the heroine is the special girl, or finally committing to her after dragging his feet, and her long wait for this moment can reveal another toxic side of the special girl narrative. Three words, eight letters, say it, and I'm yours. I. In the Carrie Big relationship in Sex and the City, Carrie is made to feel less than, not worthy of ending up with the man she loves for years. And his unattainability makes her want him even more. She fixates on Natasha, Big's superficially perfect second wife, believing that Natasha is the special girl due to her beauty, poise, and youth. She's shiny hair, style section, Vera Wang, and I'm you know, the sex column they run next to ads for penile implants. Yet, Big cheats on Natasha with Carrie, reinforcing Carrie's special power over him. And eventually, after years, she is triumphant, landing this man who has really never made her feel good enough. Only then is she the special girl. Carrie, you're the one. Meanwhile, if one partner puts the other on a pedestal as a special girl, that can also make it hard to have a natural relationship. 
Sex and the City has a great example of this in Charlotte and Trey. In Trey's eyes, Charlotte is such a perfect wife and future mother ideal that, in an illustration of the Madonna whore complex, he can't have sex with her. Trey sees you as his virginal wife, not his sexual plaything. Today, we're entering an era where young women are pushing back more against the faux special smooth-talking OTT boy and all the love-bombing tools in his arsenal. In Olivia Rodrigo's song Deja Vu, she speaks to her ex's new girl in lyrics like, I bet she's bragging to all her friends saying you're so unique, so when are you gonna tell her that we did that too? She thinks it's special, but it's all reused. Rhetoric like this, calling out the guy who uses the same special techniques on every woman he meets, can help all women get a little savvier about recognizing canned, cliched plays and instead seek out guys who want to form a genuine connection with them for them. Alongside the special girl loved by a man trope, we've also seen the rise of the special girl story, where she gets to be the central, self-defined hero in films like The Hunger Games and shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Both Katniss and Buffy are strong, resilient heroes in their stories before before they fall in love. I volunteer as tribute. One girl in all the world, a chosen one, one born with the a strength, strength and skill to hunt the vampires. These stories provide a breakthrough for the special girl, as in their case, love isn't actually what makes them special. You're a hell of a woman. It feels more explicitly like any guy in her life is just lucky to be there and play a supporting role. The special girl trope can be toxic, but that doesn't mean we aren't special, especially in the eyes of those who love us. Carrie, I know what I look like. Then you can't see what I see. I'm not a model. Then you can't see what I see. When a relationship is genuine and not based on outward appearances or weird power dynamics, both people do end up feeling, well, special. In To All the Boys I've Loved Before, Lara Jean Covey is a special girl, and not just because she has the special guy's attention. She's kind, shy, quirky, and deeply romantic with strong values oriented toward family. We see all of that first, and then we watch Peter fall in love with her because of those things. There's no one like you, Covey. Their love story doesn't start out with him instantly knowing she's the one or intensely showering her with affection, and he's not trying to shape her into some kind of mysteriously superior special girl that trumps all others. Actually, they start dating as a decoy, and he happens to fall for her unique personality along the way. In Legally Blonde, Elle doesn't fit Warner's expectations of what a wife looks like. I'm never gonna be good enough for you, am I? But Emmett easily sees the special parts of Elle, like how she's nonconformist and approaches situations differently to everyone else. And we're trying to be something that I'm just... just not. What if you're trying to be somebody you are? It's a reminder that specialness is in the eyes of the beholder, and the one you're meant to be with is the one who sees the real special you. Pam from The Office is the perfect example of a girl who's made special through her partner's eyes in a true love rather than toxic way. Pam's and Jim's love is a slow burn romance that grows as they get to know each other better than anyone else. And while other people may not think she seems good enough for him, she'd probably be a six in New York, but she's like a seven here in Scranton. He's steadfast in his commitment because she's his special person. Pam herself is so in love with Jim that sometimes she fears she isn't special enough for him, which is part of why their relationship takes so long to get off the ground and falters in the final season. And I'm afraid that this Resent is not you. enough for you and I'm afraid that I'm not enough for you. But ultimately she is really special and it just takes the right guy to unlock and appreciate that in her. Not enough for me. You are everything. Gloria from Modern Family is an example of the kind of woman who men want as a trophy wife, because in society, a beautiful woman acts as a special reflection of a man's achievements in masculinity and virility. But what Gloria wants is a man who makes her feel special for what's inside, and her husband Jay, though he loves her looks, regularly indulges the invisible and more vulnerable parts of her specialness. Gloria, you're so much more than how you look. We also see in Modern Family how the special status can be subjective. Phil is happy in his marriage to Claire, but when he bumps into a former college rival, he implies that he's married to Gloria, pretending that he has bagged the trophy wife. Wow, that's your wife? It would appear so. But Phil doesn't realize that the guy he's trying to impress actually thought Claire was the special girl all along. I just always assumed you would marry Claire Pritchett. She was gorgeous. God, I was so jealous of you back then. Which reminds us to focus on what we have and look for the special side of that. 
Finding what's special in your own relationship can be rewarding. In 2016, a group of psychologists and behavioral specialists conducted research into sexual desire and concluded that feeling special is actually a key part of female desire. So creating a healthy special girl narrative in the relationship can actually improve sexual chemistry and everyone wins. And of course, the most important thing is to work out what you find special about yourself. This is Mirabelle's journey in Encanto. Surrounded by her ridiculously special family, she's the only member who doesn't have a discernible gift. I call it the not special special, since, uh, you have no gift. Yet Mirabelle is kind and loving and sees the best in everyone. She's the glue that binds her family and proves that having some flashy, obvious talent isn't the only way to be special. In the Lego movie, all of the characters have been told that there's an elusive special, someone with the power to solve everything. Lucy is desperate to be the special, and she's sad when normal guy Emmett appears to be the chosen one instead. I wanted it to be me, okay? I wanted to be the special. But by the end of the movie, it turns out there was never any such thing as the special. It was all down to self-belief. The only thing anyone needs to be special is to believe that you can be. Lucy and Emmett are working together to save their world, showing us that being special comes in all sorts of forms and doesn't necessarily involve being labeled that way. The same message comes through in The Matrix, where a big part of Neo becoming the one is believing he is. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. And in The Matrix Resurrections, Trinity has more one-like characteristics. I'm not doing this. Are you doing this? Underlining that it's really their love that's the special force. Being one in a million can actually be isolating. When we reject being put on a pedestal, we can ultimately become more than the special guy or girl. We can become part of a special relationship, whether that's with friends, family, or any kind of true love. Because I'm in love with you, Arch. Only you. This is the take on your favorite movie shows and pop culture. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.